bring your mind back to what we have said about feeding in plants and animals. We said that animals feed on ready-made food. They are heterotrophs. They don't manufacture their own food. Then, they, because they feed on several food and ready-made food, their food is made up of several groups of substances. A lot of things make up the food they eat. Then, before this food substances can be absorbed by the body of the animal. It has to be broken down and acted upon by the digestive enzymes. So animals exhibit enterotrophic nutrition. Enterotrophic that is they feed on so many things and they feed on ready-made things. They don't manufacture their own food. Food stuff, substances. Food is any substance which when absorbed into the body cells Old energy and materials for goods, repairs of damaged tissue, and regulation of body processes without harming the living organism. Food is anything that, when it is taken in by the body system, it produces energy and materials for growth. That is, the body is able to grow, then worn out tissues are being repaired, then processes of the body are regulated. So that, and also, another key factor in definition of food is that it is not harmful or harmful to the living organism. It's something that benefits the organism. It makes the organism to grow, it provides repair to damaged tissue, then it regulates the body processes. Living organisms are divided into two based on their feeding habits. I said that earlier. Autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs are organisms that manufacture their food on their own. They are basically primary producers. We said that's under functioning ecosystem. The heterotrophs are other organisms that cannot manufacture their food but feeds on ready made food. And most of the animals fall into that category. Animals can be grouped according to the type of food that they eat. And based on that type of food, we have grouped them into three. The carnivores, the herbivores, and the omnivores. Carnivores are flesh eaters, like the dog, the lion, the snake. They eat flesh. Then we have the herbivores. Herbivores are plant eaters. An example we have goats, sheep, rabbits. Those are flesh eaters. Then we have the omnivores. Omnivores are plants and flesh eaters. They eat both. And examples we have pig, we have man. So those are the groups that we classify animals according to the type of food they eat. The importance of food to man. Food, first of all, make energy available for work, for work. That is, the animal is able to work because when you take food, you have energy for work, then there is warmth, you have warmth, there is heat that is produced, so you feel warm when you eat. Then food also makes material for growth, and repairs of worn out tissues available. There is material for growth and also for repair of worn out tissues that is available to the eater of the food. Also, food keeps the organism healthy so that it can fight against diseases. Food upholds the immune system of the eater so that it can fight against diseases. So we have classes of food. The following classes of food we have carbohydrates, proteins, fats and oil, or what we call lipids. We have mineral salts, vitamins, water, and roughages. That's seven. Seven classes of food carbohydrates, protein, fats and oil, mineral salts, vitamins, water, and roughages. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic compounds that are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And it is Hydrogen to oxygen is in the ratio 2 to 1. That is, oxygen is two times the quantity of the hydrogen that is present there. Also, we have examples of carbohydrates. We have starch, sugar, cellulose, and glycogen. Those are carbohydrates. Then the general formula of carbohydrates is C to base X, H2O, then Y. So X and Y are different variables. Then examples of carbohydrate food, we have yam, your rice, maize or corn, guinea corn, bread, garlic. Those are examples of
carbohydrates. Then we have types of carbohydrates, the monosaccharides, the disaccharides, and the polysaccharides. Those are the three types of carbohydrates that we have. Monosaccharides, mono, that's one. They are simple sugars with one unit of glucose. That's where you got the name monosaccharide from, simple sugar with just one unit of glucose molecule. And their general formula is C6H12O6, just one molecule of glucose that they have. And examples of monosaccharide we have glucose, fructose, and galactose. Those are monosaccharides. They have one unit of glucose. Then the next type of carbohydrate is disaccharide. That is the, sh the sugars that have two, they have two units of simple sugars. And their general formula is just C12, H22, then oxygen 11. C, that is carbon, we have 12, then hydrogen 22, then oxygen 11. Examples of disaccharide we have sucrose, maltose, and lactose. Then the third type of carbohydrates we have polysaccharides. Polysaccharides, like poly is many. They are as more than two units of simple sugar. Polysaccharides have more than two units of simple sugar, and their general formula is C6H10O5, all into brackets hen. Then examples of polysaccharides we have starch, cellulose, chitin, and glucose. What importance does carbohydrates have? They are the ones that supply the energy requirements for the activity of the animal. So they are energy producing food or energy supplying food. Then when carbohydrates is oxidized, it results in heat that is used in maintaining the temperature of the body of the animal. When the carbohydrate food is oxidized, it's used heat that keeps the animal warm. Also, carbohydrate is the starting material for the synthesis of protein and fat. It is the one that leads to the synthesis of protein and fat. Also, carbohydrate is a body-building food. That is, it is used to build body parts, e.g. the exoskeleton of the arthropods. Then, glycogen acts as food reserve only to be used when the need arises. Glycogen is stored from carbohydrates as it's kept in the body as a reserve when there is need for it. Now we move on to the next class of food, which are the proteins. Proteins are complex organic compounds made of smaller units called amino acids. So amino acids make up the proteins. Then proteins consist of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sometimes phosphorus, and sulfur. Then there are the sources, animal sources of protein include milk, egg, fish, cheese, chicken. Those are animal sources of protein. Then we have the plant sources of protein, which are beans, granite, soybean. Those are all those are the plant sources of protein. The what importance of protein are they are responsible for growth and development. Proteins are responsible for growth and development. Also they are responsible for repair of worn out tissues. Proteins are responsible for the repair of worn out tissues. Then they are responsible for the production of enzymes. Then also, proteins give certain amount of energy, not as much as we have in carbohydrate, but they also give certain amount of energy. Then pro protein is responsible for hormone production. Protein is responsible for the production of hormones. Then we have fat and oil. That's the third class of food. Fat and oil, or what we call lipids, are organic compounds that contain high proportion of carbon hydrogen then with little oxygen you know we said fat and oil so fat now talking about fat fat are solid at room temperature and they are not soluble in water but are soluble in solvents like ether kerosene benzene and chloroform they are not soluble in water but they are soluble in kerosene ether benzene chloroform then they are 
obtain from plants and animals, you can obtain fat from plants as, as well as animals. Then talking about the oil, oils are liquid at room temperature, unlike fat, they are liquid. Then they are obtained from plants and animal fats by eating, when you eat the fat of animals and plants. So you get your oil. The sources of fat and oils include your palm oil, granules, melon, butter, fish, cheese, cotton seed, soya beans, margarine, margarine. So those are examples of or sources of fat and oil. What importance does fat and oil have? They give more energy to animals than carbohydrates. Also, they provide heat for the maintenance of the body temperature. Then, they are responsible for the formation of the cell membranes. Fats and oils are insulators to nerves and cell membrane. They are insulators to nerves and the cell membrane. They are essential, they are the ones that produce essential fatty acids to the animals. Then, fats and oil are fat soluble vitamins. They are responsible for the production of fat soluble vitamins.